Everybody, thanks so much for listening to Fire Breathing Rob. Uh, we appreciate that. If you're listening to us on the podcast sites, please subscribe. If you're listening to us on the YouTube, please subscribe. And if you are hearing this on the radio, thanks for listening. We appreciate that. We have a superwoman on here that I found out about reading through Sports Illustrated a couple weeks back, I guess I should say. And she is, and I'm going to have to read this, Melissa, because you have so many accomplishments in your life. I can't just say this off the top of my head, but this is Melissa Stockwell. She is a two-time para Olympian. Uh, she's a swimmer. She's a triathlete. She was a former army, uh, army officer, rather. And even before we get into all the other stuff, first of all, Melissa, thanks so much for your service. Uh, my family has a lot of service members in it, so I do appreciate your service for that. Uh, and thanks for coming on the program. We're going to be talking a lot about you and all your accomplishments, so I appreciate it. Thank you for having me, yes. All right, so first of all, and I, 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 can't, I started out with Superwoman because I was watching something and hearing about that you broke your back in a bike crash, and then you were competing after that. So that's why I say Superwoman, you know, that's one of the things because you've done so many other things, you know, being in the military, uh, competing in the Olympics, so, and then obviously having two kids. So, but go back to that. Can you talk about the bike crash and how are you feeling after that and then competing in the Olympics yeah. after that? Go ahead. Sorry. Um, so I did have, um, yeah, so I competed in Tokyo just about, gosh, three weeks ago, August 27th. Right. And, you know, we're training for the race for five years and about, it was eight weeks before the race, I was on a bike, just like a training bike ride, um, ended up getting into a bike crash, hitting, hitting a tree, fracturing my back. Um, eight weeks before this race, I trained for, you know, for, for years. So not ideal, but, um, you know, I was told by the doctors that was, quote, the best place to break a back. I could, I, if I rested, I could still kind of be on that, that starting line in Tokyo. Yeah. So I rested, um, was not ideal. Um, you never want to rest, uh, you know, leading into this big competition. But at that point, my goal was just to be there, to compete, um, kind of to see what I could do and just be proud to be there. So yes, not ideal, but I was able to still be there and, and compete. You know, talk about growing up in general in sports. I know researching you, you were big in gymnastics. Uh, is that, Was that kind of your main sport growing up or did you play like hundreds of sports? No, it was, gymnastics was kind of my, my main sport. When I was younger, you know, five, six, seven, I did, you know, uh, swimming. I did some... Um, um, I did soccer, but it was, uh, gymnastics was kind of my, my, my main thing. So you went into Afghanistan or, or just Iraq? Cause I know the story about Iraq and we'll talk about that in a second, but were you in both? Nope. Just, just on my rack. Okay. Okay. So, you know, can you tell people about Iraq being there? You know, obviously you're in a foreign country, totally different than the U S uh, what was it like there? Just like a small synopsis, if you could, about that. Um, hot, <laughs> hot, <laughs> um, a lot of unknown. You know, you get yeah. there, I'd seen all, obviously on TV, you know, the news, but you get there and it's just like very surreal. Um, you know, we would go down the road, drive our vehicles, and there was just people everywhere. You're not sure if someone wants you there, do they not want you there? So just kind of this very surreal, hot, dusty, um, unknown place that, um, you that you end up in. So what I was doing, we didn't really, um, interact much with the direct Iraqi po population. So okay. if, if we were to, then yes, there would have been translators, but we were more, um, logistics, um, getting, you know, things from one place to the next, um, kind of working within our own group. So, but if, if we, I mean, of course, if we needed translators, they, they would have been there. Okay. So can you bring us back to the day when, you know, the bomb did go off? Yeah. So it was um, April 13th of 2004. Mm -hmm. And it was just um, kind of like any other day over in Iraq, except for, you know, I woke up and we had this, this briefing. I was going to do a, a convoy. So basically I was going to be a part of a whole bunch of vehicles kind of going from one point to the next, um, yeah. delivering various supplies and about 10 minutes into our ride, we went under this bridge and there was just, you know, this deafening boom. And there was, 
uh, black smoke, the smell of metal, and my vehicle had been struck by a roadside bomb. So to make it could be a long story pretty short, um, that was the last day I stood on my own two legs. It did result in the loss of my left leg above the knee. So I uh, was sent from literally the sands of Iraq through Germany and then ended up at Walter Reed Army Medical Center where I um, started doing um, all my rehab to kind of, you know, figure out how to live my life that way. So my thing is, how did you keep the faith? I'm sure you went through tons of surgeries. There was a lot of stress, anxiety going through this. How did you get through that with losing a limb? You know, I've always been very um, positive, you know, optimistic, and it didn't stop there. I still was then. But if I ever had a bad moment or a bad day, I at Walter Reed, you're kind of surrounded by these other wounded soldiers. So all I had to do was, you know, look across the room and see someone missing both of their legs. So how could I feel sorry for myself when I only lost one leg? So it just really put things in perspective. Um, and I had an amazing team of people, family, friends that kind of dropped everything they were doing and lifted me up when I needed it. So kind of the combination of my team of people, perspective, and just kind of keeping that positive attitude um, helped me out. Uh, what advice would you give people that do have, you know, a physical disability and maybe they're ashamed to, they're ashamed of it rather, they hide it. What advice would you give to people that have that? Don't, to not be ashamed or to hide it. I mean, we're all, yeah. I think what makes us different makes us special. I mean, and unique. I mean, I, you know, I have two young kids now and one of them is, is celiac, so she can't have any gluten and she's only four years old. But the other day she said, mommy, why, why can't I have gluten? And I said, it's just part of what makes you you. Like, I don't have a leg. You can't have gluten. Every, every person that you meet is going to have something that's so special about them. And I think it just, I think if you embrace it and be proud of it, it just kind of becomes more of who you are. So going into being an Olympian, you know, you talked about Walter Reed and we just talked a little bit about, you know, getting through those trials and tabulations you had with your leg. But when you were there, it seems like you discovered the pool. Can you talk about that? And I know you did swim before that as a child, but you discovered the pool. And my thing is, as far as pools, is once you swim, it's like a real therapy as far as mental. Uh, it helps your soul and it helps you relax with the anxiety too. Is that how you saw it? And also what got you into the pool in general? So the, there was a pool at Walter Reed. So Walter Reed is where I did the majority of my rehab, the, the military hospital. And I, I knew I wanted to be active. I didn't really know what I'd be able to do. And um, I decided to get in the pool kind of as soon as I was able to and immediately felt this sense of, yeah, calmness or the water kind of had like a healing effect. I, it, I almost like forgot like I was missing my legs. So fell in love with the, with the water pretty early on. And then um, as the months went on, learned about the Paralympics and I could compete on the world's biggest athletic stage um, in a sport that I trained for. And so decided that I was going to give it a shot in the sport of swimming initially. So yeah, I just, I love the water. I love the smell of chlorine, which is very random, but I love it. So just, um, yeah, kind of made sense to jump in, to literally jump in that way. So Melissa, who was instrumental on getting you involved in the Olympics? Was that your idea? Was that somebody at Walter Reed? Was it a family member, a friend? Who was it? Um, so there was a gentleman um, by the name of John Register who ended up, we're, we're great friends now, but he came to Walter Reed a few months after I was injured, put this presentation on for a bunch of wounded warriors that all about the Paralympics. And I kind of sat there with my mouth open saying, oh my gosh, I can do what? What can I do? And he is, you know, booming voice kind of just convinced me that someday I wanted to be a Paralympian. So I left that meeting knowing that somehow, some way I, I wanted to be there. All right. So can you go through that? And obviously it's a whole different ball game from growing up wanting to be a gymnast uh, and then obviously going through the military and then losing your leg. And now you're going into being a swimmer first and then obviously a triathlete. So can you talk about that process? Yeah, so the water, um, so the water, like I said, kind of, I, I love the water from the beginning and I learned about the Paralympics and it was kind of a no brainer. Well, let, let's try this in the sport of swimming. So at a long, I was a total long shot when I started. I mean, the, the Paralympics, you have to beat your competitors, make certain times. Um, 
It's not, you know, just sign up and go. So my times were super slow and I had to, you know, make them a lot faster. So moved out to the Olympic Training Center, did, did everything I had to do to, you know, try to make my times fast enough. And it, it ended up working out and I was able to compete in the 2008 Beijing Paralympic Games. And then after that, I was invited to try a triathlon. So swim, bike, and run. And um, kind of thought triathletes were crazy because why would you want to do all that? But I ended up doing my first triathlon in 2009, fell in love with it. I loved all three sports, kind of being on that course and um, was a triathlete from then on out. So I'm going on, geez, you know, 12 years of triathlon right now. But can you talk about, you know, bringing us back to 9-11 as far as 2016 and, you know, the accomplishments that you made on that day. And that's such a, you know, tragic day in American history and how you and two other women, you know, winning the gold, the silver and the bronze really brought, you know, light to a, a day, dark day in American history. Yeah, it was. So September 11th of 2001, obviously a day, <clears throat> change the world. I mean, we'll never forget that day. Sure. And it's a day that, you know, we've honored and remembered every year as years have gone on and 20 years, kind of crazy. It's been that long, but, you know, honoring that just a few weeks ago. But on September 11th of 2016, I was in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil at the 2016 Paralympic Games, competing in the sport of triathlon on a pretty incredible day because it was um, the first time that triathlon was in the Paralympic Games. It was September 11th, wearing a USA uniform, and I got the bronze medal, and my teammates got gold and silver. So it was this USA sweep on September 11th, and standing on the podium, three Americans, three American flags. I mean, truly showing the world, you know, the human of the American, the spirit of America, and just how much ability is in a disability. So, I mean, it'll go down as one of the greatest moments of my life. How hot was it training in Brazil? You know, I think of the rainforest. I remember, I don't know if they had the World Cup there or something. I think it was the World Cup. I remember them talking about the mosquitoes and the heat in general. How was it, you know, just because you brought up Brazil, how hot was it, in, you know, training? And how did you train for that heat in general and the humidity? Um, I will say that Tokyo was actually hotter than Rio. Really? Um, okay. It was. You know, I, I do a lot of my training at the Olympic Training Center in Colorado Springs. Yeah. And we do have this room that we can kind of set the temperature mm -hmm. and humidity um, for. So we would do a lot of training in, in, that, in, the, in the heat to kind of simulate it for, for both of them. Oh, okay. So you mimicked all that. Okay. As we go to the end of the interview, can you tell the viewers a little bit about Dear to Try and co-founding it in general and, you know, what you want to do with it? Yeah. So Dare to Try, it's a um, Dare, the number two, T-R-I. It's a nonprofit that I co-founded back in Chicago where I used to live in about 10 years ago. And we wanted to get athletes with physical disabilities into the sport of triathlon because it's, um, it, you know, athletics is important in, in anybody's life, but especially someone with a disability. So started Dare to Try. Um, we've served 10 years later over a thousand athletes. We provide the adaptive equipment, training, um, coaching, transportation to the race, pretty much anything that you would need to do a triathlon. And these athletes race, they finish, they get a medal, and they just have so much self-confidence, self-worth. And it's truly, you know, the start of what else they can do in their life. So it's um, one of my proudest professional accomplishments and just very proud of it. So, Melissa, how can people help you to try? Can they donate? Can they volunteer? What can they do? All of the above. So, yep, we definitely um, we do rely on a lot of donations. Um, the website is dare, the number two, tri.org. And you can go onto the site. You can donate. You can find an event that may be near you. We're always looking for volunteers. Um, it is mainly based out of the Chicago area, but we have athletes all over the nation. We have events that happen all over. So yeah, check out the website and hopefully you'll find something that, um, that you can help. Can you give people a little bit of hope as we end the interview that are suffering or struggling at this time? I mean, I think first off, it's valid. I mean, it's a hard time right now. I mean, COVID it turned all of our lives upside down. I mean, it's, it's hard. It's, it's okay to recognize that. 
I, but I think you, I think more than ever, you have to find a team of people that you can call on the good days, call on the bad days, just to be there and just to do, do every day what makes, uh, you happy. So a lot of things we can't control, right? We can't control COVID. A lot of times we can't control, um, you know, health issues that we may have. We can't control things that happen to us, but we can choose how we perceive the outcomes of them. So it's not always easy, but there is, I can tell you that there is some sort of silver lining in whatever it is you're going through. You might not see it now, but keep your head up. I mean, push through. And a lot of times, Remember that we end up even better on the other side sometimes. So find the, try to find the positive, you know, take each, each moment, each day as it comes, get through it before you think about the next one. And hopefully before you know it, you'll, you'll be on the other side and hopefully better off from it. So Melissa, as we end, where can people find more about you? I know you just gave, uh, talked about rather dear to try, but where can people find more about you and follow you, whether it's on social media, your website, whatever it may be? Sure. So, um, yep, I have a, my website is just melissastockwell.com. Um, you can find me on Instagram, Twitter at M S T O C K W E L L zero one. So M Stockwell. Um, and I, yeah, kind of share my journey on, on all sorts of stuff. So yeah, give me a follow and, um, hopefully you'll, you'll enjoy it. All right. Melissa Stockwell, again, she's truly amazing. Superwoman here on fire breathing Rob. Thanks so much for your time, Melissa today. I appreciate Thank you. it. I appreciate it.